What is going on you guys? So I'm just bringing you guys a video on this 2022, I guess it's the 2023 Bowtech SR350. Uh, they came out with the bow in 2022, but I bought it in 2023. And I just wanted to give you guys my take, my experience shooting this thing. I've been shooting and hunting archery for about four and a half years. I've been shooting bows since I was, you know, a little baby kid, but figured it'd be worth popping in if any of you guys are kind of checking this bow out and seeing if, if it might be the bow for you. I think that it's a bow that you should definitely shoot. And to give you guys uh, some backstory, or actually to give you some details on the bow, I guess we'll start there. This bow I have set at the with 70 pound limbs. It does come in 80 pound limbs, but the feet per second, it didn't change much. So I was like, there's really no reason to go in 80 pounds on this bow when it doesn't change the feet per second much. So that's why I've, I kept the 70 pound limbs. I bought this bow not only due to the fact that it was fast, but I bought this bow because I had went and shot it and it's really, really comfortable. Like it's really, really comfortable for being a speed bow. And there's been some hate on the bow about it not actually being a 350 feet per second bow. And to be, to be frank, I've never got a bow that shoots 350 feet per second because my draw length is at 27 and a half inches. But I got this thing cooking at 312 feet per second right now with a 409 grain arrow. Um, I'm shooting a victory. <clears throat> what is this? This is a victory. Oh gosh. Sorry. Wasn't prepared. <laughs> this is a rip extreme velocity. So it's a 300 spine, 409 grains. I have 75 uh, grains in the front with a hundred grain tip. So I have that brass insert. And then I, I have a couple different vein configurations right now. I'm running a three vein or a three fletch with a slight two degree or one degree offset to the left, just because my arrow comes out to the left. But the bow itself, you guys, has been super comfy. And I went and shot a bunch of different bows before I chose this one. And I was back and forth with the Matthews and this Bowtech. And I'll tell you why I bought this bow over the Matthews. The biggest reason was the speed difference. And one of the issues that I had come up against is with all my hunting bows shooting a little bit heavier arrow, um, even shooting the lighter arrow, like I really never got an opportunity to play around with my buds and shoot 120 yards and like have a chance when you go to archery shoots. Cause I didn't have a, I didn't have a pin for it. And so one of the big goals that I was trying to accomplish this year in 2023 was I wanted to be able to shoot out to 120 and 130 yards. And I know it's maybe excessive. It's not necessary, but that's why I wanted a fast bow. And that's what I wanted to build out for this year. Um, but, but I also wanted to, you know, just run you through some of these <clears throat> components that I have on the bow and explain to you what my goal is with it. Aside from distance, I am going to be taking this bow and I'm going to be shooting four animals in New Zealand with it. So a stag, a chamois, an alpine goat, and a tar. And this is the bow that I'm going to use. I'm not going to use that arrow setup. I'm going to use a little bit heavier arrow. I'm going to rip a rip TKO, but this is the setup and 70 pound limbs. It's shooting at 300. Uh, 309 to 312 feet per second and i really really like it it's a comfortable bow <clears throat> i have it on the speed setting you can also change it to a comfort setting which slows the bow down a little bit but it gives you a little bit uh, stronger back wall i haven't had an issue with the back wall one bit in this bow so right now i have an ultra view the hunting um smaller scope it's a two pin which i i've came to really really enjoy i kind of just got on the the, the the you know the freight train or whatever uh, it was kind of a fad and ultra view blew up so i bought it and what the hell i like it <laughs> um but i'm running the cbe trek sl uh side mount slight sight mount and i'm i'm doing that because if you guys have ever run the adjustable sliders they give you these little crappy tapes and the crappy tapes i mean if you hunt in the archery season in, in summertime you, or any time for that matter you've experienced it peeling off and i was sick of that because i had that happen to me on an archery hunt um so this allows me to actually bolt my sight tapes on i don't know if you guys can see that very well but you can you can bolt these sight tapes on so i can run two different arrow setups with the same exact bow and that was really attractive to me so that's why i chose that that uh slide it's a carbon fiber slide it's not cheap but i didn't really care about cheap i'd rather buy it once than three times and that's why i went with that and i'm running a rage of all quivers i'm running a rage a five arrow quiver the reason why i did this is because it's super lightweight and it's made out of carbon fiber up top some cheap plastic and then some some of the rubber that's you know every quiver is made with but it's made out of this like lightweight aluminum um 
And then it's got a super simple, sleek design to attach my quiver to. And I just thought that, that was convenient. I have a seven pin. I have a seven pin quiver as well from Tight Spot, but I, I just, it's too bulky and I took it off. So long story short, I ended up with this. I'm running the QAD drop away. This is the ultra rest. So it's got the, the ultra adjustment. I did that um, even though I'm really not a fan of it. I've always ran a whisker biscuit, but I went with this because the bow shop sold it to me. They got me. <laughs> but so far I've had, I've had really no issues besides the little uh, felt kind of peeling up off the, the edges. But my friend, horror story for you guys that care, a friend actually was on an archery hunt and broke this thing in half and he didn't he didn't have the replacement piece like it was an older model they didn't have these replacement pieces but still like what are the odds of you packing around an extra replacement piece that breaks off you're screwed so i've always run a whisker biscuit never been affected by you know anything by running the whisker biscuit i actually went from a prime inline 33 to this bow and i love that bow it's probably one of the most most comfortable shooting bows that i've had and and shot uh, the only reason why I went to this is due to the fact that I wanted to get some distance and I wanted some serious speed, which I really have never experienced in a bow. Besides an old RX-7 that I ran that I absolutely hated because it just, it had no, it had no forgiveness that you couldn't hold that bow, bow back for more than, uh, you know, a couple seconds without just feeling like you need to let that arrow rip or your shoulder is going to freaking rip off. So and I've seen that with anyone, pretty much anyone that I watch shoot an RX, you know, an RX series bow. They're sitting there at full draw. They're sitting there at full freaking draw, just shaking. And it's like, that is, that is not comfortable. You, you know, in a hunting situation, you shouldn't want to do that. So this bow, part of the reason why I bought it is because I could hold the bow back. It has a really good backstop and I feel comfortable when I draw this bow back. It just sinks in and I shot and I shot and I shot at the bow shop compared to the Matthews. I shot the, the prime. I shot the, um, I, I shot the, um, what was it? The PSE. I shot, I shot a bunch of different bows. I really like the PSE levitate. I might try that this next year or later this year, but I ended up with this bow and long story short, you guys, I really, really like it. And I think if you're trying bows, I think it's worth putting this into the mix. You know, don't don't worry about the brand name or anything like that and just go shoot the damn thing because I think you'll be surprised just like I was surprised at how comfy this thing actually shoots and how comfy it actually is. Um, there's some negative about it. I mean, of course, there there is a lot of complaints about the bow not actually shooting and clocking at 350 feet per second, which to be totally fair, I've never had a bow that shot at 350 feet per second or rather even 320 feet per second. Um, with the 27 and a half inch draw, it's, it's, it's pretty much impossible for me, a guy like me to get my bow to shoot that fast. And I killed my, I killed my bull elk. I killed my mule deer. I, I you know, I killed those animals with a way slower bow shooting like 287. Right. And so we know that that doesn't really matter too much, <clears throat> but the fact is, you know, I ended up here with this bow cause I wanted something fast. I wanted something that was quick that I could get some distance with and, it's a lightweight bow. It's got two different uh, modules on it. One, you know, one is a sport module, so it's it's gonna allow you to shoot a little bit faster, and then a comfort module if you wanted to, you know, tune it back a little bit. Again, I already told you it doesn't really affect me. I really like to just keep it in that sport module when I shoot the shit out of this bow. So, so far everything has been really really comfy. I'm running a Conquest Archery. This is uh, the Control Freak series. Um, stabilizer set. I really like this stabilizer set. I, I don't know if you guys have heard of it or checked it out, but they're sleek and slender. And if you guys know me, and I'm sure you can tell just from looking at the bow, I'm a perfectionist. I like things to be, you know, color match. And I, I just, I like my stuff to look nice. And this stabilizer, I didn't have to change a thing for the sand color that comes in this bow. Uh, I did look at the OD green. I thought that was kind of cool. Almost like the color of my shirt or the black. But I ended up going with this because the stabilizer set matched it. Um, and overall, it's, it's just been a good bow. I took a lot of weight off of it because I, I did a little bit of research. I've been watching John Dudley's videos. So shout out to you, man. Um, been watching his videos and just realized I don't need so much weight on the bow. I need to trust the gut feeling that I get when I have that pin hovering over the... Um, my aiming area and so i'm gonna fling a couple uh, arrows down rip some you know through the old the old sr 350 
let you guys maybe you know hear what the bow sounds like see what it looks like when you shoot it <clears throat> i really enjoy it i think you'll really enjoy it as well and it's a really quiet bow so just let's rip a few come on lucky come all right perfect um and i know i talked to you guys about getting some distance so right now i've got this pin out to 135 yards without my my fletchings hitting so i got my distance <laughs> which is nice because some of these local competitions these distant shots are 140 170 yards so that's nice perfect shot so as you guys can probably hear it's a quiet bow it's a really comfortable shooting bow. I was really surprised because I've always been, you know, a name brand kind of a guy, right? It's like you you go to the Matthews, you go to the you go to the Hoyts, you know, you those are really the big two. You like you you hang with those two bows, you go to the PSEs. Like Bowtech for me has never been on the radar. It's like a bear. Like I've never I don't ever since I was a kid, I like I never wanted to go back to a bear. It was like a beginner bow. But you know, my my bow shop, uh hunting house here in Reno, Nevada, they and Tim Burnett, you know, he runs a solo hunter web uh, site. Chandler, the guy that sold me this bow and helped me buy this bow, kind of convinced me of it. Man, he was right. Like, it's a really shockingly, surprisingly bo uh, fun bow to shoot. It's accurate. It's quiet. There's a lot of good things about it. More good than the bad, in my opinion. And I'm a guy that likes to change things up. So, you know, although I shot a prime inline 33 last year, which nothing beat that bow for comfort, in my opinion, it was such a sweet shooting bow. I hunted with that bow. I killed two animals with that big game animals with that bow this year. I'm going to kill four animals with this bow this year in New Zealand, which is going to be super exciting. Um, and then I'm, I'm really itching to try the PSE Levitate, that John Dudley bow. I think that thing is just, gosh, it's bitching. It's super lightweight, which is kind of, kind of feels like a toy, but I want to try it, see what that's like. But for now, this is the bow I'm going to go with. And I think you guys should check it out as well. I think you'll really, really, really enjoy it. So let me fling these last two arrows down range, and then we will put everything away. This bow retails at $1,249, which, you know, most of the high-end bows, they, they run that. I mean, if you're going to go and buy a, a Hoyt, it's going to be even more expensive. But I felt like it was reasonable. I think I'm all into this bow, maybe like, I don't know, 2,000 bucks with everything on it, which maybe a little bit more than you'd like to spend. That's totally fine. You don't need the ultra view, you know, sight. You don't need the Trek, the 300 or $450 uh, railing. Like you don't need a lot of that stuff. But the bow itself, it's all bow. We're gonna see how it performs this year in New Zealand. Hoping, praying that there's no mistakes, no issues with it. I've got over a thousand arrows through this thing right now. No problems yet. And uh, everything is exciting. Boom, perfect shot. It's such a clean bow. You know, I'm knocking down, at a hundred yards, I'm knocking down groups, you know, a soda can groups at a hundred yards with this setup, which is cool. And I've been consistent shooting it. Cameron Haynes, you know, consistency is king, especially when it comes hunting season, being able to perform in the minute that you need to make that shot. So, love the bow. You guys, should just seriously, just go check it out. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, shoot me a DM or whatnot. Um, you can find me on Instagram, at Muley Junkie. That's probably one of the easiest places to get me if you want to directly talk. And then, obviously, here on YouTube, if you guys have any questions, concerns, drop them in the comments. If you guys have questions about mule deer hunting, upland, big game, or uh, upland, small game hunting, or big game hunting in the West, Go ahead and shoot me a message. I love to see you guys engage in this page. Go ahead and subscribe and like if you guys enjoy the content and want more of it. But for there, that's it for today. <laughs> and I hope you guys have a good one.